That's great. Thank you very much. So let me share my screen and we will make a start. So well, hopefully that will appear momentarily. Excellent. So yeah, um, as Chloe said, I'm going to set, uh, we'll, we'll make sure that links are available. My plan is to, to give you access to all of the templates I use. So um, don't fret, you'll get access to those. So let's jump in then and, and start working through this. So the idea behind this little webinar was to explore a range of formative assessment activities that teachers can use um, and to start developing their students' creativity and skills and confidence. We know students love the use of their mobile phone and um, have quite a narrow, brand, in my experience, quite a narrow band of, of, of confidence when it comes to doing certain things. But when you ask them to start to delve into that creativity a little bit more, they're, they're less able or comfortable doing so. So let's make a start. So I'm really interested in, in the in the in the chat in the discussion um, when it comes to alternative forms of assessment. And by that, I mean things that aren't necessarily just written based um, uh, summative or formative assessment activities. What sort of things are people doing? So how are people currently developing uh, their students digital creativity by the, the sorts of formative assessments or summative assessments that you are running with your students? So if you can jump in the chat and give some suggestions, really interested here what sort of stuff you are doing with your students to try and help them develop their digital creativity and also just broaden your assessment um, strategy so you're not just focused on text-based written assignments. So let's see if we have anything in the chat. Whilst you're ruminating on that, we will we will make a start, but do please add your comments in the chat as we go. I can hear it, it can, it's pinging at me, which I suggest means people are, are starting to put some stuff in the chat. Uh, portfolios or posters, podcasts, great, that's excellent, Maria. Um, flip videos, fab. I know, I think we should all have a moment's silence for Jamboard. How dare Google do that? How dare they? Um, uh, what else have we got? Quizzes, um, more portfolios. Yeah, excellent. So we, we've, we're using quite a few. Some of those tools you're already um, that you've mentioned, we're going to touch on. But hopefully, I've got some different ideas on how you can use them. And great, Jerry. Yeah, HB, H5P is, is fab. Excellent. Right. So moving on then. Now, this is what I like to throw people slightly. So I like to suggest PowerPoint can be used. And people look at me blankly and go, what? That's for presentations. Well, I think it can be used for more. And I think if we're looking at developing our staff's digital skills, it's always useful to start with something that they're familiar with. Um, I find that sometimes when it comes to digital technologies, certainly with, with new, really new staff or maybe experienced staff who haven't grown up with it, it's quite daunting jumping on to do something in quizzes or make, make students do a flip video, whatever it is. So sometimes it's nice to start with some of the basics. Um, and make use, typically most classroom situations, certainly within the college I teach, have access to either a smart TV or a projector. So they've got that display at the front of the room. So there's things they can start to do. So I think there's lots of ideas that we can start to do with, with PowerPoint. And the advantage of PowerPoint is that most staff are familiar with it. From a student perspective, they've, they've most likely grown up using it at school, so they can focus on the creative aspects. They're not having to learn the application. So where do I like to start? Well, those who follow me on the socials will know I do love an infographic. Um, I think they're a great way um, for, for summaring, summarizing the key elements you want to cover during a lesson. They could be used as part of that sort of lesson starter where you're highlighting what you're doing and why you're doing it. It's a great way to check students' understanding and can be quite nice where I like to do it as a formative assessment activity we're asking the students to create an infographic highlighting their five takeaways from the lesson. Um, and I share a template with them, which we'll touch on in a bit. I think for me, the real key benefit is it helps them to communicate succinctly and picking out those specific key points that are relevant and pertinent. It's very easy. Students, and maybe I'm making a generalization here, students typically aren't that great when they certainly when they join us at making notes they don't know what are the key bits they need to to capture and make notes on so it's nice to be able to um to, to help them to start to pick out what are the key pertinent points and not include all of the waffle so what do i do well i like to create a, a template in powerpoint so i go into powerpoint 
I changed the canvas size so it's the long thin template um, and, and with that size wise I tend to do 22 centimeters by 56 centimeters and then what I do is I add some shapes as you see there and some text boxes and then um, I use it in different ways I will sometimes I will put some just outside of the the slide I will put some icons that are available in PowerPoint that I think are relevant to it um, and then I share it with the students so what I will do um, as towards the end of the lesson as an exit ticket I will get the class to collaborate on an infographic I will provide the framework I'll provide some icons that I think are relevant and they can drag and drop copy and paste the bits that they they think are most useful and make a note um, on what it is that they're doing so that's quite a nice way of doing it. at the end of the lesson as part of an exit ticket students contribute their te one takeaway to a class infographic summarizing what's been covered the other way is you could set it as some sort of formative assessment activity for homework or if you're in a in a space where you've got access to computers you could ask the students to do a small little infographic but by giving them the scaffold of what the shape looks like and the template it's much quicker for them to start to populate it and as i said because they're familiar with powerpoint most of them can just jump straight in and start start creating it you'll find when i share the the presentation where we share it via the link after the session um there's a little video tutorial and I go through on how to create a PowerPoint template. So let's have a quick peek at the chat and then we will. Uh, absolutely, so dual coding, uh, great for reducing cognitive load. All right, so let's move on then. Um, where do we want to go that way? Um, now we we mentioned the the sad passing of of jamboard with google announcing that they are going to discontinue the product so i was thinking about what are the alternatives um and this is one idea that i i drew up it's more sort of taking on the lead from padlet so i've created a a slide i've inserted text boxes where i formatted the text just because I, I like my little design touches i've added some little um drawing pin icons and then I've added a, a, a thumbs up and a, a, a thumbs down on my thing I then share that with the students giving them edit rights they populate their thoughts in the boxes and then as a follow-on activity I'll get them to rate um, their their peers comments by copying and pasting the icon of thumbs up or thumbs down and placing it around the post they most like there's different formats you can do for this I've seen it where you can I've, I've tried it where you've you have multiple columns so you get them to make the contribution and then on slide two you get them to sort out and rate or, or um, respond to some of the, the the suggestions that have been made now i appreciate this won't work for everyone um there are some cohorts that you know as soon as you give them free edit rights they're going to say start typing things inappropriately but with, where, where you've got a group that you know who they are and and they are the respectful then this is quite a nice alternative and again because they're familiar with powerpoint there's not a huge jump to learn what it is that they're doing. Um, another one I like is anagrams. Typically, lots of lots of of, of topics that they're, they're learning have very key terminology. So anagrams are lovely. This is a really simple thing. Just adding the morph tool to the slides and you get this lovely reveal. I know I'm a bit sad, but I like that sort of thing, that reveal as the anagram reveals itself. So anagrams, quite a nice thing to do um, for teachers to do to check students understanding and the crossword now powerpoint has a drawing feature which means you can use it either in conjunction with a smart tv or a smart board or you can just get the student to use the mouse on the teacher's machine and i, I this is quite nice you can drop in ai i found ai um we use copilot microsoft product is really good at coming up with crossword clues so put some crossword clues in there and then get the students to to come up and write their responses in but it can be a, a team based thing. It could be individuals, but just again, familiarizing them with the spelling and those key bits of vocabulary that they need to do. And it's something that you can use at the front of the classroom, um, which means the students don't need to have access to a mobile device. On that same theme, we've got some other ideas where you can do a sort of mix and match. Now you could use the, the morph tool. I find just using the drawing function in PowerPoint, you can just match the two to get the students to match the two bits up um, again very simple but it's something that it 
enables you to get the students maybe moving around the classroom space if there's enough space. Um, and it's a visual thing that everyone can contribute to. And it's a great way either at the end of the lesson to check understanding or at the beginning to see what they've retained with regards to knowledge from the previous session. Um, classic, label the, label the object. Um, so in this case, bit of construction, labeling the, the different components of a roof. Um, they could write it on a piece of paper or they could call it out. There's different ways you could facilitate that. But again, simple way of, of using PowerPoint and the teacher being able to check student knowledge. Same sort of thing, missing words. Again, you could get the students to discuss maybe a sort of think pair share approach, get the students to discuss what the missing words are. And then you could go around and ask them to um, to highlight what their what the missing words are that go in the sentence. Or it could be a, uh, an order of the sequence. So if you're teaching a vocational topic, it could be that you've got lots of processes that they need to go through in a particular order. Um, or it could be, as is the case in this example, it could be history. And it's quick thing of what is the what was the order that these events happened in. And then because I'm addicted to the morph tool, um, you can do a reveal. And, and that's the answer in, in, in which they, they took place. So there's lots of simple things that that member of staff who maybe isn't so confident in, in using some digital technology in an interactive way could use at the on the on the screen at the front of the class. And then my final suggestion, and this is the latest one that I've just released a how to on my YouTube channel is word search. Now, word searches is great. And in, in yesteryear, we would have printed it out um, and got the students to work independently to do that. But I don't know about you, but at my college, we're encouraged not to print um, and we have a limited print budget. So this is quite a nice thing to do. Um, you create your 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 word search. Now, I haven't populated all of the letters. Create your word search, drop in your letters, and then you can ask the students to call out a specific. Now, this one, the, the screenshot I've grabbed here has the answers revealed, but the idea would be the answers would be hidden and students would call out a coordinate. So it could be B3 and, and you go around, you either have them in teams or pairs and they're calling out coordinates to reveal a letter. And then you can see maybe a competition, which team can get the most words discovered. And you can obviously highlight those words once they've been discovered. So again, linking to develop of English skills, familiarity with vocabulary, simple but effective and, and a nice interactive thing to do at the start of um, at, either at the start of a lesson or at the end of the lesson to see any knowledge retained. So that's just a few ideas um, within PowerPoint. Name the objects, another one. So that for anyone who, who wants to know is a feeler gauge um, used in engineering mechanics uh, for setting tolerances. So as I say, they're just a few examples of how you can use something as simple as PowerPoint in an interactive way. And for those who are those teachers who are less confident um, in using different apps or maybe are, are reluctant because of the group they've got in, in using mobile phones, there are a few ideas that they could use just with PowerPoint to try and add a bit of interactivity at the start of the lesson or as part of a, a sort of plenary activity at the end of the lesson. So moving on. Um, someone mentioned Flip earlier, and, and I think Flip provides with lots of opportunities. And one of the things I like is this idea that you do a news report. So you ask your students to produce a little video summarizing what they've learned in the form of a news report. And they've got to consider their audience. Um, they've got, you, you can suggest potentially that there are particular points of view that they've got to represent. Um, and really get them to think about it. So it's not just them recalling information, they're presenting that information with a particular context so that um, you get that understanding that they're really clear on, on what it is they're saying. So that's one thing you can do with it, having them particularly present information through a particular uh, through a particular lens, a particular point of view. So um, here's, here's uh, using the filters within Flip, um, you can add even add a little breaking news thing there. You I can see I was pretending to be news presenter for I think Channel 5's Australia, isn't it? Um, but yeah, so make use of the filters and the logos and then it can easily be shared with peers um, or you can just do it where you set it up and they just share the videos with you. So that's using Flip and, and creating sort of news videos. 
similar sort of thing. Podcasts, um, students, again, the ability to discuss a topic. Um, and also, I think it's important. I, I don't know if it's just me, but social media seems to be more and more. We, we're, we're getting situations where it's presented as only one right answer, which we know is not correct. But it seems to be in certain situations. I'm not going to mention any because I don't want to get shouted down. But in certain situations, um, certain topics are mentioned and there's one loud voice that seems to shout down everything else. And I think it's important students are aware of that in life they will come across people with differing opinions and they need to be able to respect that opinion and understand it and maybe discuss it and debate it. So I think debating podcasts where you assign students an opposing point of view and get them to demonstrate that through discussion can be quite a nice way of just getting them to engage actively. They've got to research, they've got to prepare their effective argument. Um, and it just as I say, broadens their understanding. Um, and that could be done using the audio feature in Flip or using any other way of audio recording that you may want. Next idea, as I'm wary of time, amazing how quick half an hour goes, instructional videos. If students are able to produce a little video on how to do a thing, they're demonstrating to you that they know how to do that thing. So thinking about vocational topics, this can be quite a great way to get them to create a little guide on how to do X, Y and Z, um, which you then can share with subsequent students who join the course later on. But it's a way of you assessing the students, um, their knowledge, their understanding of what's the key bits of information, just like the infographic, what are the key bits of information they need to include. Um, so it's what the key information, the, that sequencing of information, which is so important and making sure that their, their language is appropriate and, and, and ready for the intended audience. And when it comes to tools and how you can use that, Canva video, I think lots of us are fans of Canva. Canva video, very easy to use, um, really straightforward process. They can add their own content, they can make use of existing materials within Canva, um, really intuitive editor. Um, and it's, it's a great way of, of them demonstrating to you again that they've got that knowledge and understanding. Um, and there's so many features now. I've, I've done a little video on it, but I think I've just scratched the surface. There's so many things you can do. You can animate shapes. There's just so many different things that they can do. I, I think the key bit with all of this is you're building their digital skills, but you're also building their communication skills and that language and what's appropriate language use and getting them again to consider about the audience in that they're making it. If this is aimed at someone who's never made, in the case of this, a chocolate cake, then they've got to choose their language appropriately and make sure that they're chunking the information down so it's not overwhelming. Um, carrying on with my sort of theme for, for establishing students' um, familiarity with key terms, I think a glossary of terms can be quite useful. So if you've got a, a new a student or, a, or a, new pro, a new cohort of students, you're starting a new topic, there invariably will be a number of, of, of key terms that they need to understand and uh, associated with that and a number, a fair bit of vocabulary that they'll need to be familiar with. Uh, and so creating a glossary of terms is, is a useful to do that. And there's a number of ways you can do this, but let me just have a quick check on the chat. So what have we got? Oh, loads in the chat. D -d 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 -d. Yeah, so Eve said, uh, slides are great for think, pair and share, pre-planning and checking understanding. Um, oh, I'm, I'm glad you like the idea of grid references. Um, what else we got? Embedding opportunities to record themselves in low risk activities can help reduce anxiety. Absolutely. I think it's so important if, if, if you're doing that sort of um, podcast type thing that potentially maybe they're only sharing the submission with you. So it's them and their peer recording it, but they're only sharing it with you uh, ahead of maybe growing their confidence to put something out and share it with the wider group. Uh, um, and someone else just uh, singing the virtues of, of Canva. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love Canva. It's great. OK, let's jump back then and carry on. So with glossary of terms, there are a number of things you can do. Um, great for checking prior knowledge and um, familiarizing students, as I said, with um, how to spell specific vocabulary and, and start to understand the meaning of those key words. I used to teach photography. Well, I say used to, I still do. And 
you go into the studio and, and you'd say, can you pass me that Fresnel attachment? And they look at you blankly. Um, and it's getting them away from that referencing things as the thingy madooda, what's it, or whatever it is. It's giving them that confidence to be able to talk about either the topic or, or reference equipment in an appropriate way. When it comes to, 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 to gathering students' understanding of vocabulary, Microsoft Forms is just, or not just, a while back, has include now includes a present feature. So for those of you who love Menti and the word cloud feature within Menti, you can now get that for free. If your college or school use Microsoft and you get the present features, you can just ask them for, for key terms and then you can see you've got the option for it to be viewed as a word cloud or all responses. Um, but it's just a nice way. And what I like about it, if you are getting students to use your mobile phone in lessons, it displays a QR code so they can get access to it nice and easily. So we'll just jump through that. Um, and then um, final thing, use of video. Video is fab. When I started teaching, because I'm an old, old goit, um, I had to go to the library and book out uh, a TV and a video. I know it's ancient. Now video is just everywhere. You can play videos on your computer at the front of the room. I think video has a, a huge opportunity to, for students to engage with it. They're used to video. Um, and these two tools are great ways to try and add a bit of um, engagement and a way of helping them to to actively watch the video as opposed to passively watch the video whilst they're snapchatting the person sat beside them so twee is an ai put out tool that will create multi-choice questions based on the youtube video really easy to use you drop in the um the youtube url you specify the 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 particular section of the video you're interested in, and it will generate some questions or you can use this Chrome extension. Um, it will give you a transcript of the video, which you could then drop into something like Copilot and use that to create the questions. So I have rattled through a lot. I think that is me done. Um, there we go. Um, please do connect with me. I'm on, on Twitter. Um, you can reach me on my website or I'm also on YouTube.